All right, we're going to take a look here at masking in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, we're going to start with the basics. I'm going to show you how to create a mask and uh, basic stuff like that. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and create both of these effects here. This sort of tacky effect to this uh, Xbox 360 controller and this reflection here as if this is sitting on, oh, say, a shiny surface. So what you're going to need to do is download this Start Masking AI 10 file from tutvid.com. Go to the download section. There's a specific section in there for Adobe Illustrator files. So download that, and if you have Illustrator 10 or higher, you will be able to open this file. And I certainly hope you do. So open up the Layers Palette, and let's look at creating our first mask. Masks are created over here in the Transparency Palette. You can open the Transparency Palette under Window Transparency. And if you look next to this thumbnail of your artwork, okay, I have this controller selected, by the way. Double click on that, and what appears is a black box, and your artwork goes away. You've just created a basic opacity mask. If you look up here in the toolbar, it says opacity mask. Um, now, basic, basic thing you need to know about opacity masks, and if you have dealt with opacity masks in Photoshop, you know this. Black covers white reveals. You can think of black as a sheet of paper you're laying over your artwork and white is uh, you sort of tearing holes in that paperwork. Okay, it's a mask. You know, think of a mask that you would uh, put on. You got holes for the eyes. Anything, any white you put on cuts a hole in the mask. Okay, so that's basically how masks work. And I'm going to show you exactly that. I'm going to take the circle tool here and you can see I have a white fill here. No stroke, white fill. If I draw a white circle here, I am cutting a hole in that black mask. And you're going to see that I can see just that part of that controller. Okay? That's helpful because what we now know is black hides, white shows. So, what does that mean with a gradient? Well, let me draw that same circle. Okay? I am going to open up my swatches palette here, and I have a black to white gradient. Select that. Well, you can Im immediately, excuse me, you can immediately see that. One side you can see as if it's the entire, you know, the controller is there, and it's fading out. Okay, well that's because black is on this side, and black hides. White shows black hides, and anything in between shows to a certain degree. So very light grays show almost all of what's there. Very dark grays hide almost all of what's there. Okay, so the closer you get to black, the more you hide. The closer you get to white, the more you show. Okay, so that's going to help us out when we do that reflection. So, what we actually need to do is create a mask that will give us that tech effect. So what we're going to do is delete this opacity mask. Now there's two ways you can get rid of an opacity mask. You can either hold down shift and click this, okay, and you, I'm sure you can't see it, but there's a red X that appears over it, and that gets rid of the effect. Okay, you can shift click again to get that effect back. That is also done by disabling the opacity mask. But if you actually want to get rid of it, just get rid of it all together. Hit release opacity mask, and that gets rid of it all together. Okay? So, let's get started creating that tech effect. Create a new layer, and we're going to build our mask on this layer, and then transfer it into the mask area. So, let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see a little better. Let me zoom in a little more. Okay, just like this. Now, I want to be able to see my top left-hand corner here of my artboard. Grab your square tool, or your rectangle tool, actually, is what it's called in Illustrator, and fill, make your fill black, okay? So select the fill cir or square there, circle. <laughs> select the fill square, and select the black in your swatches palette. Now, just click once anywhere on your artboard. And what you get is an options dialog box where it's asking you to select the width and height of your square. And it is going to be a square in this case, so we are going to make it 30 pixels by 30 pixels, okay? And you can see we have a black square dumped right onto the stage. Well, whoops, we don't want it right there on stage. So grab your selection tool, select it, and you can move it up into this top left-hand corner. And if you have snapping on, it should snap to that corner. But I'm going to show you a little trick. Adobe Illustrator does have an align palette, and... One thing you need to know about the Align Palette is if you want to align it to anywhere on the stage, you have to make sure you have Align to Artboard selected. Okay, Illustrator is called the Artboard. 
Okay, so just click it to turn it on. It's turned on when there's that little check next to it. So align it to the left-hand side and align it to the top side, just like that. And there we go. We have it in the upper left-hand corner. Now, we want to up we want to apply an effect is what it's going to be, something that's going to duplicate this square over and over again, all the way across the stage and down the stage and fill in the entire stage quickly and easily. And there actually is an effect in Illustrator that will do that for you. It's very easy, and it's going to give us equal spacing, which is important as well. Okay, so let's do that. Come up here to Effect, go to Distort and Transform, and come right down here to Transform. Now, you probably can't see very many details on this dialog box, but if you're following along, you um, have it there on your screen. But I'm still going to tell you what we're doing. Up here in the top half is scale. Just leave our horizontal and vertical scale percentages at 100. We're going to make 20, or excuse me, 15 copies, because we're going to do the vertical first. 15 copies, and we are going to move this vertically negative 32 degrees. Now, I'm saying negative because we're going to be moving it down. If I just say 32, it's going to add all of our copies above it, okay? And if I hit preview, you're going to see that we have 15 copies of this, and they actually run off screen. But I can see that we actually go three and a half copies too far. So I can take this back to 12 copies and still have half of a copy running off of my stage, just like that. Okay, so we're going to hit OK, and right there we have a whole series of copies, quick, quickly, and easily. But that's not enough. We want it to go all the way across the screen as well, and you can see it comes all the way out to there. So let me move my Layers palette over to here. I'm going to move my Swatches palette off screen for a second. Whoops, there we go. All right. And what we need to do now is duplicate this series of squares across the screen this way. So we're going to come right up back to Effect, and we're going to hit Transform. Okay, not Apply Transform, just Transform. And right in here, it's going to give us a dialog box. It's going to ask, do you want to apply a new effect? And we want to apply a new effect, so we're just going to say, Apply a new effect. And we're going to leave all of our scaling options at the same, leave them at 100. This time, we're going to make 20 copies. And we're going to set our vertical move to 0, and our horizontal move to 32, not negative 32, negative 32 would move us back off stage, not where we want to go. Moving at 32 is going to move us across the screen that way. So, we're going to hit preview, and you can see we go right across the way we want to, but I can see we go two and a half squares too many. So we're actually going to do 18 copies, and that's going to give us just the right amount there, plus half of a square. And it looks like I've placed this on the wrong layer, but that doesn't matter. Select that one square, Come up here to Object. Well, actually, let me just quickly show you what we're about to do. If you look, or if you select that square, you can see that this whole series of squares is really just this one square, and it says effect that we've applied to it. Now, when we get into the mask, we want to adjust the brightness values of some of the squares out here. Well, as it is, if I take the color palette, pop it over into grayscale mode, and adjust the brightness, all of the squares are going to change color, okay? Well, that's nice, but not for what we want to do. So... I need to make each of these squares its own piece of artwork. And you can do that by coming up here to Object. Make sure you have this object selected. Come up here to Object and just hit Expand Appearance. And you can see now we have a whole series of squares. These are all grouped. So if I deselect, I can just select anywhere and they're all going to select. Now that's not bad. It's going to be too much of a pain in the neck to uh, deselect each and every one. So we're going to leave it like this. Um, and it's also going to be too much of a pain in the neck to ungroup them. Because they're actually, if I just hit Ungroup once, they're still grouped into columns here, okay? And we'd have to go in and select each column individually and ungroup all of them as well. So we're going to leave it like this, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the direct selection tool to select individual cells, if you want to call them that, okay? So we're going to select that, and we're going to come up here to edit, and we're going to cut it off of this layer because we don't want it there. We want to make a mask out of it. So we're going to select that controller layer, okay? I'm using this little circle here, right there, to select the entire layer. And I'm going to bring the transparency palette in right here. I'm going to double click. It's going to cover with black. By the way, if you don't want it to cover with black, you can just hit this check and it will unclip the mask. Okay, so then you're filling with white so you can see everything. I'm going to come up here to edit. I'm just going to hit paste in front. And because these are all black squares, it's going to hide everywhere except the little grooves in between the squares. Okay. So you can see just a little tiny bit of the controller. It's not even recognizable. We're going to select that. And what we're going to do is... Actually, we're going to deselect. We're going to use the direct selection tool here. Oh, no, we are going to select it. What am I thinking? We are going to select it, and we are going to 
change the color to white. There we go. Now, we are going to use the direct selection tool. We're going to clip, select clip, by the way. Okay, so we see the white lines running through the controller. Okay, our background is all black, and just our squares here are white. Now, hit the direct selection tool, and we're going to hold down shift, and we're going to select a couple of these uh, cells, all right, because we're going to edit the color or brightness values of some of these cells to give it that tacky effect. I'm just selecting random cells anywhere. It doesn't matter which ones you select. It can be any of them. All right, then we're going to come over here to the color palette. It's easiest if you grab the grayscale slider, and we're going to make these a little bit darker. Okay, so these ones become slightly lighter. All right, I'm going to deselect, and now I'm going to select some more of them. All right, preferably ones you have not selected before, but do whatever you want. Okay, just like this, and I'm going to grab that color palette again, and I'm going to make these ones really dark, so there's a noticeable difference. These ones are really light, all right, and deselect that. Now, one thing this shows us is that various shades of gray show and reveal various shades of your artwork. Okay, so you can see that these, the lighter ones, these are the darkest grays, okay, these ones, whereas the ones that are sort of middle gray here, these are not quite so dark, and then the ones that you can see the controller entirely, those are full white. Matter of fact, if we want to view and see what our, our mask actually looks like, okay, just hold down the Alt key or the Option key and actually click that mask thumbnail, and you can see exactly what we have. All of these white squares, then we have some squares that are almost black, and some other ones that are just pretty much... 50% gray, okay? So, hit Alt again and select the thumbnail to bring you back to regular mask mode. So, that's it for this one. What we're going to do is go ahead and lock that layer up, and we're going to move on to layer 2 here, which is going to be making that reflection. First thing we want to do is scale this controller down, so I actually want to unlock that layer. Select it, and just scale it down, just so we can move it off to the side. And we want to open that layer up, select the linked file, don't select the layer. The reason we want to specifically select the linked file is the linked file we don't have a mask on. We actually have that mask on that layer, just like that. All right. Um, so we want to select the linked file, just like that, and copy it, Command or Control C, to close that layer up, come up here to layer 2, and we're just going to paste it. Okay. And we've pasted it right down here, but it's still on the controller layer because I didn't actually select it. So let me just delete this layer. And what you need to do is actually select the layer. I thought I selected it there, but apparently not. And paste it right there, and you can see it pasted onto that new layer with no mask. So we're not being bothered by a mask. Um, and one other thing I really quickly want to show you with this layer is, this layer is actually a good example to use. You can see we have our mask here. Let's say we have taken this mask. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold down Alt and click that thumbnail. Okay. You can see we have this, but say we've used up some of these squares out here, okay, and we've added dark squares and lighter squares all over the place. All right, so this looks like a checkerboard, you know, just not quite a checkerboard, but, you know, we've got all kinds of different colors going on. Well, say we wanted to do that and then see where the controller looked best. Well, we would just simply select, whoops, come back in here, regular editing mode by selecting the thumbnail with the artwork on it. We would just select the controller and move it around and move it underneath the mask. Well, the problem is the mask moves with the artwork. Quick way to fix that is there's that little chain icon in between the mask and your art, you know, these two thumbnails here. Select that to unlink them. Now what we can do is move the artwork without moving the mask. Okay, So that can be very useful uh, at certain times. But for the time being, I'm going to link it up just so when I move that uh, artwork there, we don't have any problems. All right, I'm going to lock that up. And we're going to move our layers palette right over here. And we're going to quickly add a reflection to this controller. Select that controller. Come up here to Effect. And once again, we're going to apply a Transform effect to it. We're only going to make one copy of this. And we're not going to move it horizontally at all. Matter of fact, we're going to move it vertically. And we're going to move it negative, vertical. Let's try 150. Let's hit Preview. And that looks pretty good. But the problem is it's not flipped upside down. If this were a reflection, this would need to be flipped upside down. So what we can do is hit Reflect Y. That's going to flip it on its Y axis. Hit OK. All right, now what we have is this reflection, and we can apply the uh, mask right to it just like this. Or we could break this apart and make these two different objects and apply the mask like that. Let's apply the mask to it just like this. So I'm going to double-click next to the thumbnail, just as we did before, and we get all black.
but actually I want to unclip this okay so we can see what we're doing select on that thumbnail there we go and grab the rectangle tool and now draw a square that's going to engulf the entire lower controller the, re the entire reflection okay just goes right around it and we're gonna fill that with a black to white gradient now the first problem we see is that the gradient runs the completely wrong way okay you can see the entire controller here and it fades to nothing over here we want it to be able to see the entire thing here and it fades to nothing by the time it gets to really about right here by the time it gets to the body of the controller so what we need to do is rotate this and let's try negative 90 here and you can see what that does is shifts our white side up top and puts our black down here so down here is completely hidden up here is completely visible well we want to bring our black area up because we want it to be more like that okay where you just see the handle now problem we have a problem and that problem is you can still sort of see the entire controller there okay that's not what a reflection is like and this is just a little thing in Adobe Illustrator you have to grab the color palette and you can even see we are definitely using 100 percent black it's as black as it can get but because it's grayscale it's not gonna fully hide it the way to fix that is you have to switch to RGB or Q saturation brightness I really honestly I'm not sure why it does that um, but someday I may find out so there you go you can see now it completely cuts it off and now that we've completely cut it off I can see that I really want to back it off a little bit and expand the black I want to make it a smoother transition more like that okay so you can tweak your gradient to do that I'm just tweaking my little diamond slider up top there alright so that's the gradient we need right there you got white to black and we've just messed with it a little bit I'm gonna move that off screen now here's the reason why we would want to make these two objects separate objects I'm actually gonna copy this mask here because we are gonna break this object apart I'm gonna select on this thumbnail here to bring us back to normal editing mode where you know I can resize it and all of that the reason I want to make this its own object down here is so I can reduce the opacity of it now I could actually just reduce the opacity of it through a mask which I'll show you how to do just select the mask here select that object and make this white a darker gray okay and for a reflection I want it to be something like that but for those of you that don't want to do it that way what you can do is go back to normal editing mode select your object and come up here to object and expand the appearance just like that and you now have two objects you can select the lower object and uh, right here in the transparency palette, there it is. Just you're going to want to lower the opacity, something like 15 if you're going over a white background like this. But obviously, I don't want to do that because I've done it through the mask. Okay, so that's the basics of masks. Let me move my layers palette out of the way. And uh, I hope you've learned something from it. I hope you now understand how masks work. Um, and uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you followed along. Hope you'll check the site out. And uh, until next time, happy learning.